Hello Libra and welcome to my channel. My name is Nikita Antoine and today we will be doing a reading for you. Um, so as I was doing, as I was shuffling and getting the cards ready for your reading, the thought of all of the activities that I do outside of my nine to five job were coming into view. Um, and it was coming across as like, like it's very lush and rich and the amount of things that are done outside of that space far exceed what is done within those 40 hours of that week. Um, and it's, it's really interesting because in your reading, so I do, I do all these readings. We'll just go ahead and introduce the deck, but I do all the readings in a, I have um, the Threads of Fate, Weaver and Oracle deck, uh, both the Lumen and Shadow Edition. So there are four, four decks that are within this giant stack. Um, but in your reading, only shadow cards came out to play. And that to me signifies that all of the these things or extracurricular activities that you do outside of those 40 hours are completely, I wouldn't say completely, but they are hidden from view, uh, from view probably of your, of your coworkers. Uh, and yeah, let's just split it. Okay, so at the, yeah, so it's just hidden from view. Um, and I almost want to say even from you, like the depth, the richness, the fullness, the, lu the, the I was going to say lustiness, but it's not, the lushness of your life outside of work is, is, it's almost out of, even out of your own view. So at the bottom of the deck, we have uh, the devil and speak truth. Uh, both in the shadow and the devil today is coming across as either um, your boss but I'm leaning more towards it's coming it's speaking of the environment in which you work so your work environment and yes in yesterday's reading in the Scorpio reading this speak truth card was speaking about um, the inability to communicate a connect communicate the oh, I don't want to explain this. Let's just, it's like the inability to communicate the depth of a particular connection. Uh, it was speaking about like unable to put words to paper. It's something that is. Perhaps language doesn't necessarily describe what this what this is. So now we're now we're speaking about this this environment. Language does not describe the depth of this environment or the depth that this these extracurricular activities outside of work. <laughs> Um, it can't be, it can't be described or it, it can't be shared because in the Scorpio reading, it was talking about not being able to share this aspect. And now with the devil card, I'm, I'm now seeing, um, magic. Let's, we're talking, perhaps we're talking about magic. All right. So. Uh, let's go ahead and start off with your reading. Um, the first card that you have today is the Ace of Coins. And, okay, so since all of these cards are the shadow cards, uh, I'm, I'm looking, in particular, I'm looking into the background of all of this. So this Ace of Coin is on the surface. But what's interesting to be noted here is there's there's this like rainbow energy all 
throughout the background of this car. And when it first came out, it's I'm visualizing you outside um, at a fire, like kind of having a fire night, you know, where you're gathering with friends uh, outside of work. Perhaps it could be your, co your co-workers, but outside of work and sitting at a fire and enjoying this fire. Um, and what is happening at this fire, there's something interesting that is happening at this fire that is unbeknownst to you. Um, and it's kind of like there is a seed that is being planted in, in your, Okay, so I see this as a mons pubis. We know that that, that area is um, kind of like your root chakra or, or your sacral. So it's talking about there's some type of seed that is being planted in, in those energies, in your root and your sacral. Um, and that to me signifies uh, some type of creative element and that it's coming up right away with this get creative card again in the shadow. Um, and this to me looks like a pubic bone. So we're talking about like the womb. I'm not, this is not coming across as like being pregnant or getting, getting pregnant. I mean, it could be perhaps there are some Librans out there that, but that feels very, that feels a lot smaller. We're talking about, um, in, okay, going along those lines, being impregnated with some type of um, creative force, some type of source energy that is um, that is guiding creation. That's how it simply wants to come across. So going back to you being at this in this environment okay so we're talking about this environment um we're sitting at a fire right i suddenly see this card has shifted magnificently for me today um in the background we have these 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 this shape here and all of a sudden it looks like you're looking up at the sky. The perspective in this has shifted to where you're looking up at the sky, looking up at the stars perhaps. And then what fully came into view and it's very small, so I hope that you can see it, but <laughs> hopefully it will, there's this shooting star here in the background of this card. Um, and it's speaking to me that, so, and it's also talking about that. This is, this is that, this is the rainbow energy that is, that is starting to come into play. Um, and I feel as though this star energy, this shooting star is actually like, it, it's coming across as like a download. This is what is being impregnated um, into your sacral energy. So it's talking about some type of, I, some type of creative force that is um, coming into fruition. Like, like you're taking the energetic, uh, the energy of it and then manifesting it or uh, putting it into some type of physical, um, like, a tangible item so that could be I, I don't know I don't know exactly what it is but it is it's tangible because what's happening next is we have we have you showing up so this is you sovereign of coins and you're taking this cosmic energy that is coming from I, will, I want to specify it's coming from outside of your environment and it's it's dropping into the environment that you are at and 
we're moving from we're moving from this seed energy the seed is being birthed and then it comes up as this flower here so it's telling me that there is there is a progression of the um going to say impregnation but now it's it's more talking about gestation there is like some type of gestation that is happening within you in your sacral and in and 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 also in your root chakra that is producing um some type of tangible product um uh, and and with these this these shapes here around here it looks as though it's like breaking through um breaking through some type of energetic barrier and becoming manifest okay and now all of this see i feel as though you're just doing your thing you might have some type of craft that you do um that is just a, it's just one of your hobbies but you're not seeing the significance of i guess the magic that is happening behind the scenes there's a there is an incredible amount of energy that is happening behind the scenes that is fueling your creations and what i'm seeing is also that as you are creating one like this is the one that is in your immediate focus. There's there's another in your mind's eye or another another like seed that is being gestated. It's a constant flow. It's like being in the creative flow. So you while you are creating one item, you're also like the the next piece, the next art piece that you create is being gestated. It hasn't been birthed yet, right? But it's still being gestated. Um, that's, that's wildly interesting. I love that it's all happening outside of your knowledge. <laughs> um, yeah, so when you're looking up at this, this wants to come through now, but when you're looking up, at this energy this shooting star energy what you're seeing is a bridge because this is now because this is looking as though ignore the image that's in the front look to the background um, what you're looking at is the bridge so this bridge you know, and we were talking about in that, in that score, if you haven't watched the Scorpio reading, definitely go back and look at it because we're talking about some, it was talking about a bridge connection, a connection that had been disconnected and was trying to seek a reconnection. So the energy that you're looking at up into the sky is that connection, that bridge, that, so that cosmic energy is what is bridging the gap, if you will. Okay. So now we're moving on to your second row. And it took me a second to get all this in um, because it's starting off with paradox. And I had to actually like, it's a bit per perplexing because it's something that is counterintuitive. So um, it was talking about how stepping away is talking about how stepping away from this environment this energy here this nine to five or you know your current work environment is actually bringing you so you would think that 
by, okay, you have these um, beautiful hobbies and things that you like to go for, but what it's talking about is that in, in, in stepping away from that, you're finding what you are actually are, are desiring. So you feel as though you need this environment in order to um, survive, make money, uh, pay your rent, those types of things. Uh, but the paradox here is actually by stepping away, I see stepping away because it's following up with the Eight of Cups, um, which talks about moving away from environments, uh, typically in isolation, but with moving away from this environment, what's happening is you're able to seek, you're able to get the rewards that you want from that environment. It sound, I hope I'm making sense because it, it's making sense in my mind, but I hope that I'm articulating it properly. Um, and so, okay, so let's just focus in on this. Okay. So something about that environment that you're in, this work environment, is causing an Eight of Swords energy. It's a, um, it's kind of like an entrapment type of energy. I mean, we do have the devil and the devil does talk about entrapments or um, situations in which you feel, specifying feel that you can't escape from. Now that is not reality. Of course we are, um, you know, we are the creators of our world. So you do have the ability to escape that reality if you want to. Um, okay, now we're going along a different road. Okay, so it's talking about escaping reality. All right. So the paradox here, we're talking about walking away. If, okay, let's just focus in on this one. Looking into the background of this card, we have, there is this kind of like this channel right there's a channel here in between i think there's like crashing waves or whatever but hopefully you can see it i'm really hoping that it comes on camera because it's super subtle uh there's all this like lines striations that are occurring in the center in the center of that channel and it's it came across as kind of like a um a force field that is at the edge of the matrix. So if we're speaking about escaping reality, this is the the barrier or the veil or some type of force field that is preventing you from getting to the other side, okay? Or getting to the other side of where you would be able to have a direct line or communication with this um, cosmic energy. That seems to be what your desire is, is to get to that other side. However, what the guidance here is talking about is that in actuality, stepping away from that barrier is what is going to get you to that other side. Because with, with this, it seems as though every time that you approach this you approach or you go closer to this this force field or into this force field, this energy is activated. And this Eight of Swords, oh my gosh, it's, it looks to me like, hopefully you guys have seen this, but um, Hitchcock's Birds, the Birds movie, that scene where the girl is like being attacked by all of these birds. Uh, it's like that any time you get close to the edge of reality, the edge of this um, this energy here, this environment, this energy is activated and kind of like it, essentially it 
it's causing you to flee. It's causing you to run in the other direction. And I'm seeing that as counterintuitive though that's the thing the paradox card is talking about this being um, counterintuitive so while you might think that this energy here is um, causing you to become even more entrapped in, the, in an environment that um, you don't necessarily want to be in like nobody really wants to have to do a nine to five to pay the bills, but you know, that's what we have to do in order to survive. It's talking about that that energy is actually beneficial um, because it is causing you to turn the other way. It's causing you to recede. Um, oh, okay, there we go. It's causing you to recede back into your inner world we're talking we have all of this these shadow cards here and the shadow talks about your inner landscape so this energy here is causing you to go back into your inner landscape so that you can pull so that you can pull these energies out you're trying to pull these energies out now, of course, you did get this, you did get the down, it's still there. It's still gestating. It, you know, there are, there's lots in there. There's a lot. Um, and it's going to keep coming. But each time you're having to, you're having to physically take the energy and birth a creation. So every time you go back into your inner landscape, you're bringing forth another um, seed inspiration, especially because we have this element of this, it's like a rainbow fire. It's very beautiful. Um, you're bringing that seed into the manifested world. So in actual essence, you are and that's where this paradox is coming in at. You are getting to that other side. You're just doing it in a way that is counterintuitive to how, um, I was gonna say the collective thinks that you should be, how the collective thinks it should be done. I'm dipping into whether that is a collective idea that okay yes we're coming up here towards the moon and the moon talks about um, how the collective is swayed by um, energies It's as if like the, if the collective feels that there is, if the collective in general has an idea about something, right? That idea is then, it's kind of like spread throughout. Um, it's coming across now as like infection. Um, and Whereas everyone feels as though this is the proper way to go about it, uh, meaning that you should uh, kind of like take a running a running start and plow right through that that barrier, that matrix, that um, force field. That is the that is the collective. Um, feeling we were talking about feeling earlier about how like feeling sometimes is it necessarily reality or the actual way that things are um, perceived especially with this eye and the moon so the moon does talk about things that are hidden so there's something in the perception of the collective that is 
um, preventing them from seeing the way around um, this barrier. So, but what you are doing is this re returning back into your in inner landscape is actually moving you beyond that barrier. Um, because what, so we have, we have this after the Eight of Swords. Oh, I'm just realizing now that we have two eights here. We have two eights. I'm trying to see, I don't know what specifically that is signifying. I want to say it's talking about every time that you recede back into this inner landscape, there is that constant um, influx of, of new seeds, right? New inspiration, new creative projects that are, that are occurring because it's uh, eights are, are kind of, they're infinite, right? Um, so by you going, by you receding, this energy is popping this energy here. Oops. Hang on. So by this energy popping up and kind of chasing you away from that uh, barrier that we were talking about, it's causing you to go more into your inner landscape, which is allowing you to bring forth the seeds of whatever that cosmic download was that you had before, the shooting star energy, this rainbow, the rainbow fire type of energy. Um, and it's bringing you right into your, it's bringing you right into the Nine of Cups. Directly, it's almost as if like this appears, but then you're actually, you're bypassing it. This is what it's, it's talking about, bypassing it. There's another way to get around to where you're trying to go, um, which is around, it's almost like there's a shortcut in reality and that is allowing you to get to this Nine of Cups, which traditionally speaks about your wish fulfillment. Um, and in this card here, I don't know exactly what I'm speaking about, so maybe it resonates with one of you, but you see all these flower petals here? We have all of these flower petals. And we were talking about that seed, right, that's coming in, that, that is being impreg impregnated into your sacral energy, that, that creative force that you have, and then is being produced as, as it grows and gestates and is birth, it comes out as this, these flowers, right? Um, so, of course, that 8-8 eight, eight is talking about this. It's like it's raining down on you. All of these flowers, this cosmic, it's coming across as just cosmic flowers. A cosmic flower. Um, I don't know exactly what that means. What is the cosmic flower? I think the cosmic flower is... it's the final product I'm feeling that it's the final like once you are once you have received the inspiration you've just stated it you're now you've now produced it right this the thing that the thing the item the flower right the cosmic flower it is it is inspired by the cosmos or that cosmic energy that I'm calling it cosmic but it's really what it's wanting to speak about it's that it's something <clears throat> that is beyond the, excuse me hang on <laughs> one second ah, okay sorry libra about that interruption um it is actually a clear <clears throat> example 
of what is happening. Excuse me. I got like, kind of like a coughing fit. <laughs> I couldn't speak. I couldn't speak. And that's what this is talking about. It's like, <clears throat> every time that you try to reach beyond, and what happened with me, it's, it's a beautiful example, is that when, when I got close to trying to define what that thing is that is beyond that reality, this reality, <clears throat> this energy came up and what it did was it caused me to go back. <laughs> I had to hit this, I had to stop recording and then like readjust myself, realign and try to approach it from a different way. That's wildly interesting. <clears throat> Because, because psychically right now I'm trying, I am trying, I want to know what the hell you're doing. What, what is this? You know what I mean? So I'm trying to psychically get to that, that edge. I want to see what's beyond that, this, what is beyond that force field? And I, and every time I go there, I'm being pushed back. So <clears throat> The roundabout way of getting there or seeing what that is, seeing what is beyond this reality is through this creative process. It's through every time that you create a new, we're gonna call them cosmic flowers, whatever thing that you're creating in, in this process, is giving you a glimpse of what is beyond this environment, this reality, okay? Um, <clears throat> it's interesting. I, there was only a little bit left. And I'm gonna have to add it to the end, but um, what's curious is that all We'll just look at all of the backgrounds and all of these cards are very um, fuzzy. It's, it's, it's difficult to perceive like these, these are all very, the and we're looking at the backgrounds. The backgrounds are all, they're very fuzzy to see. But when we get to the end of your reading and we discover the way to see beyond that reality <clears throat> through these cosmic flowers that you are, physically creating, um, this background here has become exceptionally clear. Like you can see each of these mountaintops, all the snow that is piled up on them as well. Um, it's, <clears throat> it's talking about with each new creation that you manifest uh, and bring into this reality, because what you're doing is you, you are going and, and receiving that information and then pulling it back down into this reality. And each time that happens, the uh, what you are doing is coming from the shadow and into your, and into, okay, I'm sorry, I'm seeing something else, but it's coming from the shadow and into your um, consciousness. These all look like little owls to me. <laughs> They're kind of cute actually, like little hoots. I don't know. I think that might just be a little, I don't know, a little fun thing, but they all look like little tiny little owls that are stacked on top of each other. Um, owls, the significance of owls. Hmm. All right, well, we're gonna leave it at that. It's so funny, they don't look like owls when I look at the card, but then when I look at them in the camera, they look like little owls. You see their little little eyes and the points in their ears, right? And that's talking about that there's a another way of perceiving. Another way of perceiving that is gonna give you this, the, um, your wish fulfillment, right? 
perhaps that wish fulfillment is getting out of that environment, that environment that you <clears throat> are having to work that nine to five in order to maintain your um, stability, if you will. Um, another way of perceiving that, okay? All right, or yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let it go. Okay. Uh, thank you, Libra, for joining me in your reading. It was very fascinating. I enjoyed it a lot. And I will see you next time. Bye.